The Jack Benny Program. At 48, sold American. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. L.S. M.F.T. Why, sure. Yes, sir. You said it. Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, so round, so firm, so fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. It takes fine tobacco to make a fine cigarette. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, first, last, and always, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. At markets now open in the South, independent tobacco experts present at the auctions can see the makers of Lucky Strike consistently select the riper, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. With men who know tobacco best, it's Lucky's two to one. If all it to the little man, I'm a 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 And now we take you to Jack Benny's house in Beverly Hills. It's Saturday night, and Jack has invited Mary over to spend a pleasant evening. Gee, Mary, I'm glad you came over to help me straighten out my household expenses. These bills have accumulated all summer while I was away. Oh, Jack, this is Saturday night, and I want to go dancing. Let's go to the Palladium. The Palladium? Mary, with all these bills I'm paying. Gee. But, Jack, it doesn't cost much to go to the Palladium. They charge a dollar and a half for men and 75 cents for women. I know, for you, it's cheap. <laughs> Think of me, a dollar fifty-five just to go dancing. A dollar fifty-five? It's only a dollar fifty. Mary, only a cheapskate doesn't check his hat. <laughs> now, let's get on with these bills. Okay. Let's see. Twelve dollars and eighty-five cents for vitamin pills. Uh, $12.85 for vitamin pills. $9.72 for Samson's concentrated iron capsules. <laughs> $9.72 for Samson's concentrated iron capsules. $10.35 for Dr. Berman's bodybuilder. <laughs> $10.35 for Dr. Berman's bodybuilder. $7.96 for Dr. Horton's health tonic. $7.96 for Dr. Horton's health tonic. $22.50 for muscles. Muscles? Yes, $16. Imagine buying muscles again. What happened to the ones you bought last year? Oh, I wore them in the shower and the buckles rusted. <laughs> I could get some of that free war stuff. You know? <laughs> now, let's see. Mary, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Remember the time you bought those build up shoes to make you look taller? <laughs> oh, boy, did you overdo it. Overdo it? Those show shoes didn't lift me so high. <laughs> then why was your nose always bleeding? <laughs> oh, Mary. <laughs> I'll never forget how silly you look patting Gary Cooper on the head. <laughs> Mary, stop being ridiculous. Now, let's get back to the bills. Here, read this stack to me here. Okay. Homeway dry cleaners, $18 for cleaning rug. $18 for cleaning a rug? How could a rug get that dirty? I was away all summer. There was nobody here but Rochester. I can't understand it. Uh, Jack, here's another bill signed by Rochester. It's from Scratch, Match, and Patch, interior decorators. <laughs> interior decorators? Uh, $78 for patching ceiling and repapering living room. Patching, sealing, repapering living room. I'm going to ask Rochester about this. You don't have to. Here's a bill that explains it. $7 for 18 bottles of gin. <laughs> 18 bottles of gin. Let me see who that bill is from. <clears throat> hmm, the Central Avenue personality shop. <laughs> I'm going to find out about this. Oh, Rochester! Yeah! 
something I want to talk to you about. Couldn't you write me a letter? <laughs> no, I couldn't, and come right out here. Okay. Rochester, take a look at this rug cleaning bill. Mm. Now take a look at this bill for repapering the living room. Mm. Mm. And this bill for 18 bottles of gin. <laughs> well, say something. What a soiree! <laughs> and you don't, that you don't have to tell me, and that party almost ruined my house. What happened? Well, boss, it was kind of a dull evening, so I invited a few friends over. Uh-huh. And some of them got, well, to use a medical term, coagulated. <laughs> well, that explains the rug and the wallpaper. What happened? What about the ceiling? Some of them were higher than others. <laughs> What? Man, were they flying. <laughs> Rochester, that still doesn't explain the ceiling. How did, those, how did you get those holes in it? I told you my friends did that. Oh, the ones that were flying? No, the ones that were shooting them down. <laughs> <laughs> Rochester, this is the last straw. I'm going to punish you. Oh, Jack, put down that hairbrush. He's too old for that. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, it always hurts me more than it does him. <laughs> now, Rochester, this is the final warning. I don't want your friends holding those kind of parties in my house anymore. My goodness, in their condition, how did they get home? Oh, it was easy. You know that white line down the middle of the street? You mean they followed it? Followed it, boss. They were holding on to it. <laughs> I don't doubt it, and I'm going to talk with you later about your... Come in! Telegram for Mr. Benny. I'll take it, boy. Yes, sir. Thanks. Here's a tip for you. Mr. Benny, these blue tokens aren't good anymore. <laughs> well, I'm all out of red ones. Goodbye. Uh, Jack, who's the telegram from? Let me see. Look, Mary, it's from my sponsor, George W. Hill. It says, Dear Jack, please forget about what happened in my office last week. You have nothing to worry about. You have a three-year contract, and my lawyers told me I can't get out of it. <laughs> Unless you breach clause number 3A regarding a singer. Sincerely yours, George W. Hill. Gee, Mary, isn't that a nice telegram? But, Jack, he said if you don't get a singer, he'll break your contract. I'm way ahead of him, Mary. I've not only got a singer in mind, but I wrote him a letter asking him to come over for an interview tonight. Oh, you and your singers. Who is it this time? Well, if you must know, Smarty, it's Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra? Yeah. Boss, you mean, won't you tell me when we will meet again? That's him, Rochester. Sunday, Monday, or always. That's enough, Rochester. Damn, you're in my That's room. enough! That's enough! Finish these bills before Sinatra gets. When at the sight of you my heart begins to pound and pound and pound. Rochester, I said that's enough. <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's uh Mary, let's uh, let's finish these bills. <laughs> 
All right, but next Saturday night, you got to take me to the Palladium. The Palladium, the Palladium. Oh, Jack, don't be... Mary, it's a matter of principle. Why should they charge a dollar and a half for men and only 75 cents for women? Well, Jack, you got in for 75 cents once. That was an accident. I just happened to go to the Palladium right from the studio when I was made up as Charlie's aunt. (laughs) That's what I mean. You've still got that dress here. Why couldn't you... Mary, I'm not dressing up like a girl again. I'll never forget what happened last time. Hmm. Guy buys you a drink, he thinks he owns you. But I... But I went through... Jack! Uh. <laughs> Jack, it was bad enough being dressed like a girl to get in, but you didn't have to let a fella buy you a drink. Well, for goodness sake, Mary, I danced with him all evening. I deserve something. <laughs> What a rotten dancer he was. (laughs) Say, Mary, I wonder what he'd have thought if if he knew who I really was. Especially when he tried to put his arm around me. He tried to put his arm around you? Well, gosh, Jack, why didn't you tell him? I didn't have the heart to. He was a Marine and he was going overseas in the morning. (laughs) Now, let's get back to these bills. Say, that must be Frank Sinatra. Come in, please. Hiya, Jackson. Hiya, Mary. Hello, Rot. Oh, oh, it's you, Phil. Yeah, Jackson, I dropped in to talk to you about a new singer. Phil, don't worry about it. I got one lined up. Yeah, but who've you got? You can't get just anybody. I ain't gonna let you hurt the dignity of my band. (laughs) The dignity of your band? Phil, I don't want to disillusion you, but just because your boys were taken off parole doesn't mean they're dignified. (laughs) And here's another thing about your band that that ought to make you ashamed of yourself. What's that? Well, when I was in the South Pacific, I saw 15 natives with rings in their noses banging on hollow coconuts with overripe bananas. Well, what's that got to do with me? They were singing, That's What I Like About the Solomon. (laughs) You and your dignity. Phil, don't worry about it. Jack has a singer in mind who will lend plenty of dignity to your band. Like who? Like Frank Sinatra. Jack's expecting him over tonight. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is a trick, Jackson. You're just trying to get my band to wear bobby socks. (laughs) Well, I'd be happy if those guys wore any kind of socks. So just take my advice and don't... Come in! Hello. Remember me? I'm Herman Peabody, the insurance salesman. Oh, hello, Herman. Herman, I'm glad to see you, but I'm busy. I wish you'd come over some other time. I'm expecting someone. Well, okay. But before I go, I'd like to leave this folder with you. Folder? Yeah, it tells all about a new life insurance policy we're putting out. Well, thanks, Herman. I'll read it when I get a chance. Costs $2 a month, and you only have to pay on it until you die. (laughs) I'll, I'll read it when I get a chance, Herman. After you die, you only have to pay 25 cents a month. That's ridiculous. After you're dead and buried, why pay 25 cents a month? For that, we keep the weeds out of your daisies. <laughs> that, that's the silliest thing I've ever heard of. I don't think so. Just because you're dead, you don't have to stop being neat. <laughs> All right, Herman, I'll let, you, I'll let you know about this policy as soon as... Should I answer the phone, boss? That's all right. I'll get it, Rochester. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Don Wilson. Oh, Don, right now... I just thought of a terrific idea for a contest. Boy, you'll be crazy about it. Well, look, Don, right now... Get this, Jack. Why don't you give a prize of $5,000 to anyone who knows the meaning of LSMFT? (laughs) Don, are you crazy? Why, if I gave $5,000 to everyone who knows what LSMFT means, I'd have to pay out... $800 $800 billion. Don't do it, boss. It'll leave you with practically nothing. <laughs> now, Don, don't be silly. Everybody knows that LSMFT stands for Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Well, you know it and I know it, but I'm going to phone some people at random and find out if they know it. Imagine suggesting I should give away $800 billion. See, fellas, I'm getting kind of worried about Sinatra. It's time he got here. Yeah, I'd like to audition the kid. <laughs> Phil, believe me, he won't hurt hey, the... Hey, Jack, wait a minute. I just thought of something. What? 
Frank Sinatra isn't even in town. He's in New York. All right, so he'll come a... What? Hey, Jackson, Mary's right. Sinatra is in New York. This is Saturday night, and he's doing the hit parade program. But that's impossible. His program is on right now. Tune in the radio and see. Okay, I will. And in the fourth race at Bay Meadows, the winner was... Hmm, that's the wrong station. Maybe this is it, too. Ladies and gentlemen, do you suffer from upper plate wobble? Hmm? <laughs> Do your friends avoid meeting you because your uppers avoid meeting your lowers? <laughs> if so, try a bottle of sympathy soothing syrup. Remember, folks, sympathy spelled backwards is your tapamus. <laughs> y H T A P M Y S. So remember, friends, years of research in our own private laboratories has established the fact that when you pass the age of 35, you will be 36. <laughs> Mary, Mary, don't fool with the dial. I'll get Sinatra. Here, here, I think I've got it. And now for his final selection on tonight's Lucky Strike Hit Parade... Frank Sinatra sings All the Things You Are. You are the promised kiss of springtime that makes the lonely winter seem long. You Trembles on the brink of a lovely song. You are the angel glow that lights a star. The dearest things that I know are what you are. Someday. Happy arms will hold you, and someday I'll know that moment divine when all the things you are are That was wonderful. You know, he'd be great on my show. I'm going to phone New York right now. Maybe I can catch Sinatra before he leaves the studio. Hand me the phone, Mary. Long distance. 
Oh, operator, I want to speak to New York. I'd like to get Frank Sinatra. So when I cook, see. <laughs> Look, miss, will you please ring Mr. Sinatra for me Person to person He's on the hit parade in New York Just a moment, sir I'll try the New York circuit Los Angeles calling New York Los Angeles calling New York Hello, Los Angeles This is New York How are you, Los Angeles? (laughs) Fine, thanks And how are you, New York? Oh, I'm feeling grand But Brooklyn's got the mumps Look, operator, I don't care if San Francisco's got water under the bridge I want to speak to Frank Sinatra Now, please hurry All right, all right, keep your shirt on I haven't talked to New York since she had a baby Congratulations, get me my number Just a moment I'm sorry, sir, the lion is busy Will you call back when it's clear? Okay, call back, goodbye Well, kids, the lion is busy, but I'll get him in a minute Say, Mr. Benny... When you talk to Mr. Sinatra, will you let me say hello to him? All right, Herman, all right, but don't bother me now. Gee whiz. Well, my wife finds out I talk to Frank Sinatra. Gee whiz. I'll bet she'd be thrilled, eh, Herman? No, she'll beat the stuffings out of me. She likes Crosby. (laughs) Herman. Herman, I wish that you'd... Oh, that must be him now. Quiet, kids. Hello? How do you do, sir? I'm conducting a survey... Do you know what LSMFT means? <laughs> hey, kid. Kid, it's Don Wilson. He called my number by mistake. I want to have some fun with him. Eh? Eh, what was that? I said, I'm conducting a survey. Do you know what LSMFT means? No, nope, can't say that I do. <laughs> well, LSMFT stands for Lucky Strike Means Fine Tobacco. Well, imagine that. <laughs> yes, Lucky Strike Means Fine Tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. Do tell. So free and easy on the draw. Well, I'll be darned. Thank you, sir. And uh, give my regards. Regards to who? To Mary. Who else, you dope? <laughs> Hey, kids, while we're waiting for Sinatra's call, I'll go in the kitchen, make some lemonade. Good, I'd like them. Me too, Jackson. (laughs) Okay, I'll be right back. Say, Mary, Jackson must really be excited. This is the first time he ever offered us anything for nothing. Phil, we're not out of the house yet. Anyway, Jack isn't quite as bad as he... I'll answer it. Hello? I have Mr. Sinatra in New York now. Oh, 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 well, well, put him on. I'll talk to him. And please limit your call to three minutes. Don't worry. If you talk over three minutes on Benny's phone, a time bomb goes off. (laughs) Okay, here's your party. Go ahead, Mr. Sinatra. Hello? Frankie, this is Mary, uh, Mary Livingston. Oh, hello, Mary. How are you? Fine. Gee, Frankie, your voice sounds just as nice over the, over the phone as it does on the radio. Well, thanks, Mary. You know, the reason Jack put in this call for you is that he'd like to have you as a singer on his program. Gee, that would be swell. I'd love to be on Jack's show. Then I'd get to see you a little more often. Oh, oh Frankie, it's a good thing I'm not the type of girl that gets excited because if I was, I'd be so, so, so excited. <laughs> Mary, Mary, who in the world are you talking to? Frank Sinatra. Sinatra, give me that phone. Hello? Hello, Frank, this is Jack Benny. Hello, Jack. Now, Frank, I won't beat around the bush. How would you like to sing on my program? Well, Jack, it sounds interesting, but, uh, of course, there's the question of money. Money? This call ain't gonna last no three minutes. <laughs> Quiet, Phil. Uh, what, uh, what did you say, Frankie? I said, Jack, that I'd like to sing on your program, but there's the question of money. Money? Oh, a minor matter, to be sure. (laughs) A minor matter. Yes, I know, but unfortunately, I'm not a minor. (laughs) No kidding, Frank. You come on my program and you'll go places. You know, when Dennis Day left me to join the Navy, he was doing okay. Although I will admit he started for a modest salary. Jack, that salary wasn't modest. It was just ashamed of itself. (laughs) Now, Frankie, look. After Dennis was with me for five years, he worked himself up to $35 a week. Now, I'm willing to give you the same money to start with that he got the hard way. How is that? $35 a week? Frankie, look. 
All you have to do for that $35 is sing a song that takes two minutes, which means you get paid $17.50 a minute or $25,000 a day, which means I'm paying you a weekly salary of $186,000. I know, Jack. I know all about that. You see, there were lots of times that Dennis told me about you paying him $186,000. Oh, really? When did Dennis tell you that? Every time he borrowed lunch money from me. <laughs> well, Frankie, I can't help it if Dennis didn't know how to handle his finances. Well, what do you say, Frank? Is it a deal? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Jack, but I, I can't accept that salary. You see, a man gets into the habit of eating three meals a day. What? What did you say, Frankie? I said, I'm in the habit of eating three meals a day. Well, brother, I've seen you, and you... No, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Frank, Frankie, why don't you say okay and accept the proposition? Well... Look, to clinch the deal, I'll send you $5 in advance. And remember, there's plenty more where that comes from. <laughs> what do you say, kid? Just give me the word and we'll have I'm a... I'm sorry, Mr. Benny, your three minutes are off. What do you mean, three minutes? Listen, operator, it's only two minutes and 41 seconds. I got my watch right here in my hand. Well, I've got a watch, too, and it's three minutes. You're wrong. It's 2.41. It's three minutes. It's 2.41. Oh, darn it. There goes that time bomb. I must have said it a little too early. We'll be back in just a minute. But first, here's Mr. F. E. Boone. sold American. In a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. The riper, the naturally milder Lucky Strike tobacco. So the next time you buy cigarettes, remember Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. The famous tobacco auctioneers heard on tonight's program are Mr. F.E. Boone of Lexington, Kentucky. At 44, $44 sold American. And Mr. L.A. Speed Riggs of Goldsboro, North Carolina. A folded three dollars in the mummy sold to the milk. And this is Basil Risedale speaking for Lucky Strike. <laughs> L.S.M.F.T. 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 For real deep down smoking enjoyment, smoke Lucky Strike. For well, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Yes, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Say, Jack, where are we going to do our broadcast from next Sunday? Next Sunday, well, Mary, we'll be broadcasting from the Army Air Base at Gardner Field. Well, what are you going to do about a singer? You didn't finish talking to Frank Sinatra. Oh, I'll get somebody. Gosh, Mary, if I hadn't set that time bomb so early, I might have gotten Sinatra. Well, there's no use talking about it now, so hang up the receiver. I would, but there's nothing left to hang it on. <laughs> Good night, folks. Jack Tunney program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas. This is the National Broadcasting Company. This is KFI Los Angeles.